And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. This text seems quite appropriate for us to have before us, given that just a few weeks ago when I was otherwise entangled with family business, that the Supreme Court ruled that in the Dobbs case that the so-called settled law of Roe v. Wade was unconstitutional and wasn't so settled after all. And I imagined that there were many children that were, whose mothers or fathers were considering aborting them that hearing that message would have leaped in the womb. Of course, that's just my imagination because that's not how the Holy Spirit works. He doesn't work through the words of civil government. He doesn't work through the words of Supreme Court rulings. The Holy Spirit is given by the Word of God. And so it is that John the Baptist, in the womb of his mother Elizabeth, the once barren elderly mother, now with child by the gift of God, as he had been knit together in his mother's womb by God's very fingers, now leaped for joy as he heard the Word of God. Now, when we heard the text, it said that Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. Well, what was that greeting of Mary that caused John the Baptist to leap with joy? One might even suggest to leap in faith. Well, it was the working of the Holy Spirit which tells us that the word that Mary spoke was the very word of God. One of the features in the Bible that sometimes makes it difficult uh, is that for the sake of the narrative, the story moves along, and then it will take a break and go back and tell you the part that you missed. Uh, a good example of this is in the creation story, where Genesis 1, you hear days 1 through, se- one through 6, and then the rest on the seventh day. And then chapter 2, about seven or eight verses in, it goes back, retells the story of day 6 with more detail, with more completion. St. Luke employs the same sort of um, literary device here. After he tells us the story and how the Holy Spirit entered both into uh, Elizabeth's ear and then also into John's, even as he was six months old in his mother's womb, that they both were filled with the Holy Spirit at the word of God spoken by Mary. Then Luke goes on to tell us what the greeting was. And the greeting, of course, is this famous canticle which we sing at evening prayer or at Vespers called the Magnificat. That's the Latin for magnifies, the first word of the canticle, the song of Mary. Elizabeth heard the song of Mary, and by that song, the Holy Spirit worked faith in her heart to believe that Mary was the mother of the Savior. She says, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary hadn't even told her she was pregnant yet. That's how the story would read, except she had because she had read, or she had sang the song. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting, the Magnificat, came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And, as I said, Luke goes forward and he tells us the greeting of Mary. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. Referring to herself. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty, that is, God the Father, has done great things for me. Holy is his name. 
And then the song actually is quite interesting because it sounds much like another canticle in the Bible, one that you probably don't know as well from 1 Samuel, and that's the canticle of Hannah. If you know the story of Hannah, Hannah, like Elizabeth, was childless. And then the Lord, please, actually granted her a child. And she dedicated that child to service in the Lord, to the Lord. Her son being Samuel. So it, so it was that Mary quotes extensively from Hannah's song. And Elizabeth, being well catechized in the scriptures, recognizes what she is saying. Mary is saying that the long-promised Messiah, the offspring promised to Abraham and to his offspring forever, that he had spoken to the fathers, has been fulfilled in her own womb. That's why Elizabeth responds the way she does, acknowledging the gift of the Savior incarnate in the womb of Mary and why John himself leaps in the womb. Mary greets her with the word of God. Nothing actually has changed from that day. You too have received the Holy Spirit. You too, like John, can leap for joy at the gift of your Savior. Because the Spirit still is being given to you, being breathed upon you, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. It's being breathed on you as God, through his holy word, his son Jesus, speaks to you of the mighty things that he has done for you. Not simply being incarnate of the Virgin Mary, as great as that is, but preaching and teaching, and then setting his face towards Jerusalem to suffer and to die for your sins and the sins of the whole world, thereby defeating death and even the power of the devil. And with that, also giving you the promise of resurrection and life everlasting. The Lord Jesus has done great things for you. And he continues to tell you, maybe even in a way that seems redundant or repetitive, each week you hear your pastor proclaim, I forgive you your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But each time you hear that word, the Spirit is renewed in you, so that your spirit is, actually receives its life from the Holy Spirit, so that you too can be turned from sorrow into joy, that the proud imaginations of your heart would be struck down, and you would be made humble, trusting again in Jesus for everything you need for day and day. And so it is that Jesus continues to speak. His word is continuous, continues to be proclaimed. And with it, the Spirit is given to you that you would believe and trust and be renewed and strengthened and maybe even break out into song like Mary did. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen.